What's going on guys, welcome back to a brand new video. And yesterday, ESBC dropped this round table just out of the blue, which I just wanna say before we jump in the video, I love the idea, just 40 minutes of info from three different points of the game. Obviously, Rack with the community, um, Todd with the commentary, Ash being the owner, and then Sonny Edwards, a professional fighter, who is also an avid gamer. I know a lot of people say all boxers are always impressed because they're boomers. Sonny is an avid gamer. Uh, he even mentions in this that he went to do game creation before he was pulled back and then ended up going the box and route. And while this was awesome, I saw a lot of people saying that they don't have the time to sit down and listen to 40 minutes. So I thought today we would do a breakdown. I didn't want to do a reaction. Yesterday I spoke about really quickly about the early access. I didn't just want to sit and do a reaction. I thought, you know what, I'll listen to it in my own time, make a video about the most important thing, which was the early access. And then I thought I'd do a complete breakdown into what I believe are the most important parts. So without further ado, let's get into it. Firstly, I thought, whoa, I've been in that office. <laughs> but then I was like, I don't remember the window behind them. So maybe I wasn't, maybe it's a different room, maybe they've moved office. I was really confident at first, but then more I watched it, I was like, actually, I don't think that's where I was. I don't remember, it was in March, it was a while ago, anyways. One thing Ash says here is that the studio was founded in 2020. I'd just like to say that, that was only two years ago. The company recently celebrated its second birthday at the start of this year. A lot of people seem to think that it's been about for like seven years. It's only been two years. That's one thing that I feel like a lot of people are surprised about which is silly because we've never uh, people people say to me i knew about this game in 2018 it's like well fuck me you have a superpower that we don't have so that's just one thing that ash said here you know back when we started early you know 2020 when we when we founded the studio another thing that was really skipped over that ash said was about the the game pretty much having resets because the scope of the game is getting bigger and bigger at start it was a little project then it became bigger so they were like all right we can't build off this hit the reset button and let's go and then it happened again, hit the reset button and let's go. And that's one thing that I feel like has been skipped over, but one thing that I write the right way I clicked on and had to write in my notes. Pretty much the entire system, right? So there has been a couple of resets between when we first started out to where we are right now. Um, because, you know, ESBC was, was a game with a set scope uh, and a set plan in terms of what we wanted to release. And every time the game grew in size, it, it, it was almost like we were bolting on on, on, on this initial concept that we had. Um, so, you know, we had to make a decision of, we need to re essentially hit the reset button, uh, you know, going to uh, a refactoring process, um, which uh, again, it meant taking a few steps back, right? But that was to make sure that we would be ready uh, to build on what we've created right now. Sonny Edwards, of course, having a lot of input, even as a pro fire and an avid gamer, always mentions that he's very impressed. Sonny always sees improvements. When he sees there's issues, when us content creators played it, he, he watched those videos, he saw the, the, the things, as did Todd, as did Rack, as did Ash, and Sonny's saying, no, whenever I see these issues, next time they're fixed. And then I come again, and next time they're fixed, and next time this is fixed. It just shows that even from someone who is an avid gamer like us, he is a professional fighter, not like us. Um, and he is a boxing fan like us. He is seeing those improvements and he is critical. He's doing that mocap. He wants it to be right. And I think that was really cool for, for Sonny to be there. It was a really good, good, good idea to put Sonny as he does have a big involvement. I mean, just today, you know, I've been shown some new things that weren't here the last time I come out. And obviously I can't say too much, but blown away, to be honest, genuinely the sort of the issues that I see that, you know, people watching from, you know, behind the YouTube screen or, or, whether they might get some ESBC content and with their critical lens, every sort of problem that or, or area for improvement, as I see the game gets development, seems to just keep getting, you know, one thing wiped off, one thing wiped off, one thing wiped off. I already spoke about this, but there will be early access, Ash says here. So I'm not going to be humble about it. I told you motherfuckers there'd be early access. People said that it wouldn't, didn't make sense because of the scope of the game. I said it did make sense. It's good to be proven right. So, so whilst we don't have a confirmed release date, uh, we are working towards uh, an internal date uh, with our own milestones and we have a roadmap, you know, to that to that end goal, right? Um, we will be going early access uh, in terms of, of, you know, launching this on, on, on Steam. Of course, we don't know a date for it. I still believe quarter four of this year. If, if gun to my head, someone said pick a month, I'd honestly say December. I was going to say late November, but I'll probably say late November, December. Like, that's my, that's kind of like my guess. And even Ash says he knows it's been a long wait for fans from Fight Night Champion to this. And this game being in production for two years, you know, even that feels long. 
but they want to make sure things are done right. They don't want to cut corners just to get the game out, just to make a quick buck and bail, which is why this early access makes sense. And as much as people will say the console is, is bigger, I'm sorry, but you're just wrong. Console is, of course, bigger, but PC early access just makes sense. It's so much quicker to get updates out to Steam than it is Xbox and PlayStation. People say, well, you can get Xbox updates quicker, but then PlayStation people are going to be left behind waiting for their updates. It's not fair to have three different systems being updated at different times. It just makes sense. Then it limits the player base for the PC early access. So then we can test it and test it and test it. They can fix bugs and bugs and bugs. So when that console build comes out, it's gonna be at a better place than most console releases. As mentioned, early access will contain some things, not everything, you know, the play now, the online, things like that will all be there, as well as eight way classes, several languages for text. Commentary will of course be there, but things like career mode will not. And one thing I want to talk about really quick, I might make a whole video on this, but I just wanna mention it really quick. People are saying that it's because of the fighters. The reason they want to wait for the career is because the career is not just going to be filled with random fighters and real fighters. You're going to have things like contract negotiations, training, weight cuts, hiring, firing of cut men, um, coaches, promoters. There's going to be so much in it. You know, you've got to negotiate fights from the start to the top. You know, there's injury insurance, there's rematch clauses. It's so much deeper than we currently know. And that's what it's not. It's not got nothing to do with like oh because they don't want to have randomly generated fighters. It's because the career is going to be so much deeper than any other career that we have experienced. It doesn't mean that it won't be added. And that's one thing I want to point out that just because it's not in day one early access doesn't mean it won't be added to that early access. Doesn't mean it won't be in the full release. People need to understand what early access is before they start making these comments of oh I want this on day one. The, the, day one will be very limited. I guarantee it. Now, there's no real straightforward answer, as they mentioned, for the full release, um, because, you know, as I believe Rack mentioned, or was it Ash? I can't remember. I'll put, like, little clips up as the video goes. Um, it's all based on feedback for the early access. If they release the early access and it is flawless, console release will come much sooner. If there's bugs, which there will be, of course, every game has them, and things need to be fixed and balanced and sorted, then console release will be later and later, the more issues there is. Do a full release on either Xbox, PS4, PS5? How long does that generally take? It really depends. I mean, I think there's no sort of straightforward answer to that. I mean, a lot of it is gonna have to do with what our players say about the game and how they feel about the, the experience, right? Um, one of the cool things about early access is that you kind of get to build the game alongside your community with the feedback that they give you. Um, so Ash talked about, you know, there's going to be features that will ship during early access, like a career mode. Some of those things may take some time. Uh, but I think, you know, as we, you know, get into that early access window and people start playing, we'll have a, we'll have a sense. We'll have some things that we'll probably communicate like, hey, here's some features that we're going to deliver during early access for so that the people that are playing will have things to look forward to. Um, and then, you know, obviously we want to get there to that full release as fast as we possibly can, but to Ash's point at the quality, right. That, that we, that we is our sort of bar, um, that we have to hit, we have to feel good about what we're doing. So we're going to go into early access, feeling confident about the game and how it plays. Um, and then we're going to look at what the community says and, and take it from there, but we're excited about it because, you know, doing it this way really does mean that people will get to play, you know, sooner rather than later. I was called a big name gamer <laughs> by Todd Grisham himself. When I, when I was watching it and I saw him say some big name gamers played it earlier, I was like, oh, you. <laughs> um, so that was pretty cool to, to, you know, not be mentioned by name, but to be mentioned as a big name gamer. Just, you know, little flex there. Things they mentioned about us, the content creators, when we went to play, there was a few things they mentioned had been fixed, you know, OP body shots. Of course, they mentioned, you know, it's, this is more painful than this, but that wasn't the point. It was like, oh, I'm not, I'm not happy that you can take more, like, less shots to the body. I understand that. I felt that feeling getting punched right here. One punch can, can fold you over. But when you played it, you could just spam body hooks and the, the opponent blocking or not is going to go down. That was the issue. And they've mentioned that those things are fixed. Same as too much stamina, not enough damage, too much damage. This is all just a balancing act, as they mention here. Player feedback. We recently hosted uh, several big name gamers in the boxing community. They had some feedback. They had some, some concerns, some that we've already fixed already, including, I believe, Ash was the... Uh, Shots to the body, they seem to do a lot more damage than shots to the head. But, Sonny, you know in fighting, you'd rather take a shot to the face sometimes than one to the body, correct? Oh, uh, yeah, because at least if you get knocked out to the head, you wake up and can't really remember it. 
if you get down to the body, you remember every single millisecond of not being able to breathe. So I guess that's the, probably the consciousness is probably the biggest difference. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's all I can say on that one, really. So Ash, has uh, is that, is that issue been solved? Yes. Um, so, so that essentially was a balancing issue in the game. And, you know, in terms of the features and everything that we're doing and putting in, um, you know, that won't be the last balancing issue we'll have, right? This will be a, a going, an ongoing uh, continual process of us fine tuning, balancing, and, you know, with the help of the community uh, as well, you know, that's something that we're, we're, we're absolutely doing right now. But yeah, in terms of the overpowered body, body shots, that's being rectified. All right. The creators also felt that uh, stamina needed adjusting, that fighters could throw too many punches over the course of the fight. Will, how did the team feel about that criticism and what, what's the response? Yeah, I mean, I think that one's that one's well known. Um, it's just another thing that there's a lot of ongoing tuning for. I mean, I think certain things like damage, like stamina, uh, the body, the body shot one was was pretty obvious. Um, I think with stamina, you know, you're thinking about you know, long, you know, long fights, how many punches somebody can throw, trying to make that, you know, that it's not a completely out, out of, uh, you know, real, realistic, uh, you know, number of punches. Um, and so, yeah, everyone's just a moving target, you know, as we play the game and make changes, there's just sort of like a constant, you know, checking of, you know, how to, how do things stand. Um, and so we'll take a look at that. And then of course, when we get into early access, our players are going to have an opinion about where that's at as well. And it's just one of those things that, you know, balance wise uh, that you're, you're basically always doing on a game. And of course, those things will be balanced, which, you know, we can expect. I'm sure on the on the early access release, we'll be like, this is too powerful. This is too weak. It's a constant balance act. That's all it is. So anyway, goes on to talk about um, one thing that I just love when playing the game, and that's shifting weight, um, as I experienced. You know, when you're going back, you can't just immediately go forward and glide across the floor. Your fighter has to push off with that back leg. Or if you're going forward and you want to go back, he has to push off with that front leg. And he, he's, he mentioned, you know, even though he's a pro boxer, even as a player, that's just a great feeling. And, you know, you can't just change instant direction in real life. You can't just be walking at, at, at you know, you're, you're not, you know, you ain't got like a dash button, like from fucking uh, Metal Gear Solid Ryzen or something like that. You know, you have to change weight. You have to, it takes that second to change that direction. One thing Todd did mention was uh, hyper-realism, but the game needs to be fun. And for me, the realism makes it more fun. You know, there are so many great arcade fighting games out there from Street Fighter to Tekken to Mortal Kombat to even the Fight Night series, uh, the Creed games, you know, there are so many great games out there that, you know, while we want this realism, we can still have great, I have great fun on Mortal Kombat, I love Mortal Kombat, but for me, I, if I want a realistic boxing game, I want the full realism a video game can offer. He mentions that as himself as a boxer, it's a really fulfilling experience playing the game, getting a lot of success, mixing up, changing levels, using his real timing, you know, that real fighting experience that he has in, in the video game ring, he says is a very fulfilling experience when playing the game, which obviously I've played, but that's really great to hear again a few months later after we saw a bit dodgy gameplay in April. It's great to see Sonny, you know, say that it's still a really fun and fulfilling experience when you play the game. Obviously, it's the most up-to-date version of the game that I've had my hands on. And once I've started getting my head around certain rules and certain mechanics, I found that I could really get to a point of boxing quite smartly, quite neatly, anticipating, I think, is very important. I think, um, you know, it's where your fight is positioned to the, to like the sort of the ticks when you time to throw. Like for me, as a boxer, as a professional boxer that approaches boxing from quite a wide lens, I like being able to break down and target different areas. And of course, Sonny said something we've been saying for ages. People that know boxing will get the grips of it earlier, but of course, everybody will pick it up. This is one thing that people like to get on their high horse and say, if you don't know boxing, you can't play. Even Sonny as a professional fighter is saying, if you know boxing, you'll get the grips of it sooner. If you don't know boxing, give it a couple of days longer than these guys, you will be with everyone else. That's just the way it be. You know, everyone's going to be able to enjoy the game. Everyone's going to be able to learn the game. Everyone's going to be able to play the game. There is no gatekeeping. There is like, oh, you've only watched boxing for six years? Sorry, it's a 10-year cut-off. You have to at least watch. It's not, like, it's not like that. Just everyone's going to enjoy the game. It's just who, who gets grips with it instantly will be those that know boxing. And that's more just, or even MMA. It's more just the fact that knowing 
you, 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 what your jab is, what your straight is, what your right hook, left hook, uppercuts, you know, body shots, level changes, pivots, shuffles, things like that. So that's all it is. It's like if, if there was a fencing game or a jujitsu game come out and half of those words, I wouldn't know what the fuck they mean. So that's all it is. It's just like those earlier grips. It's only going to take a few hours for people to get used to, though. I don't know, like the football games or the basketball games where you've got to get the, the sweet spot of timing and in. And it's that sort of thing that creates the learning curve, making sure you're letting the punch go at the right time and moving your feet in the right space, using the ring, draining your opponent's energy, etc. I think people that know boxing will have an easier time coming to grips with the mechanics. But I do think it's something that everyone will be able to pick up, get the hang of when you move, when to throw. And already I'm, I'm seeing a massive learning curve in myself and other people that I've seen playing it. And I don't think it's going to take too long for people to get the old boxing games that they're used to in the arcade style and now into the new era of boxing simulation game that we have never had before has never existed before and also things that I mentioned was attacking out of the weave was an issue as well as the uh lack of movement in the weave i mentioned it in in my video that it felt like i was in a cone and i wanted more more of this um that's something they're looking at which is great you know that that's kind of all i want as well as blocking low and leaning back at the end of the day that's just what if you're in that philly show and you're leaning back there's no reason why why you can't do that and that's something they're looking at which you know is great and that's what we want to hear that's all that's what we wanted to know is that the feedback we gave they didn't just ignore they they took it on board and they started to look at things which is which is fantastic they talk about the punches and the punches being subjective and the, and the one thing i want to um say is that i hope ash knew that the new april gameplay we saw looked piss poor because of how they fought i hope he didn't think like oh what's my team doing i hope he knows that it was just because they just spammed hooks and uppercuts simple as that and that's that's one thing that because the, it was we had a real great hype through february and march for the game that april gameplay came out and we just fell off a cliff and it was kind of tough as like as you know being in the community it was tough to see that like just that fucking wild hook spamming like that i wasn't a fan but as mentioned multiple times before, and I'm sure multiple times after this, the punches are always being changed. At the minute, they, they still believe they haven't found that right spot, and that's just the way, the way it be. They're, they're going to be constantly fixing them as the game comes out, and things are always going to be improved, which is what we want. We want to know that they're not just going to go, this is it, this is what you're getting, they're always going to be improving. And of course, it's not as simple as just the punch. Ash mentions here that the punches need to flow with the movement, and also the fighters need to react to being hit well, because like I could throw the perfect two hip rotation shoulder the muscles could twitch perfect and if the person getting hit just goes that's going to make the punch look shit and that's what ash mentions as well but i think in terms of um making sure that you know we nail punches uh is it's, it's a primary component of the game right so obviously it's a very very important thing that we we want to make sure we get right and and you know with the help of of, of sunny uh, and, and and other professional boxers who come into the studio and, and even coaches, right? In terms of, you know, how punches are thrown, uh, to the point where we even got a, a you know a, a physiotherapist in talking to our animators about you know how all the shoulder muscle muscles work and you know ro body rotations. So so it is a very important part of the game, right? And 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 we've constantly evolved and 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 made made changes. I mean, you know back uh, a couple of years ago when we when we started doing this um you know in a, in a very naive way thought well you know you, you have a boxer in a in, in a in, in a suit you do some motion capture and that will give you the results that you need and and it doesn't really work that way um as, as simple as that may sound um so there's the, there's a hell of a lot of work that the guys are, are doing right now so we have made based on you know the feedback that we've we've had and what we also feel uh, improves the game. We have made some some changes to 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 how the punches work, um, and you know this is this is just going to be a continual process for us right now. You know, from now to to early access and even post early access, right? We will be continually improving, um, and you know I'm not going to essentially rubber stamp anything right now and say okay we're absolutely happy and delighted with how everything is right now. I mean we're on the right path to 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 get get to that goal. Um, so yeah, I mean, some of the changes around targeting uh, with the IK in the game in terms of, you know, how the punches are landing, uh, you know, there's work to be done around reactions because whilst, you know, a punch might look perfect, it might be the, the perfectly timed punch, you know, if the reaction is a little bit off, 
then that could have a negative impact on how the punch looks. Ash does mention the combos feel like they are almost in that sweet spot of flowing, but we need to see more real combos, not this. Oh, and Sunny mentioned it as well, but I've got it in my, literally the next note is, is Sunny is right. The next gameplay, we need to see someone like him playing just one round or just a minute of him playing very real, using real combos that make sense in the ring with his mind as a professional boxer and a world champion. But then one thing Sonny mentioned as well was that throwing really odd hooks with footwork in real life will look odd. It's not always about the game. He said that, you know, there are things you could throw with the footwork that, that he would look, suddenly look like an amateur because it's just some things just don't look good when you're when you're throwing. I think that's a perfect example that not everything is crystal clear textbook in a real fight. You're putting an input, so I don't know, power left hook to the body, right hook to the head, like things that perhaps don't make um, physical sense as when you're transferring body weight, like natural movements, natural punches to throw. Then they start looking a bit, I don't know, maybe a bit awkward, a bit out of place. But if at the same time, me as a boxer stood there and went to do step back, right hook, step forward, jab, and then check hook left, uh, check left hook, all moving my feet, there's so many moving parts, it probably wouldn't look as if a professional boxer had even done it. It'd probably look like I'm clumsy all over the place. So I think that's another thing people have to take into consideration. And when I am trying to box like a boxer and move around like a boxer and watch the watching the character that I'm fighting with rather than, um, I don't know, just sort of rushing what I'm doing. And I'm sort of trying to anticipate the opponent's movement and also the sort of combinations that I want to throw. You've got to kind of chain them in your head because there's no like, I don't know, it doesn't, you don't press a button and it presets a, a free combination. So you've got to, I don't know, and it gets to the point where you might time a move forward let go throw a punch step back so you've edged back throw a two punch combination and then finish off with a check hook out like they mentioned the shiny people you know everyone was really glossed up even like at the start of round one um of course the gameplay we see is very highly edited but still you know so sometimes it'll be round one round six round two round ten but still we did see an issue where it was very shiny in round one and they said that they're fixing it and they agreed with that feedback from the community which is fantastic Canelo model, we had a lot of complaints. They said obviously Canelo was scanned, but from seeing the feedback, you know, they did think like, you know, well, Canelo, he was scanned in, but looking at the feedback and, and looking at him again, and that they said that, you know, they're making tweaks to his model. So they're not just like, we've scanned him, so fuck off. Like, they've said, you know, you know what? Fair enough. It's not perfect, so let's, let's tweak it. And that's just brilliant. That's what we want. We don't want him just to be so stubborn that they refuse to change anything, and that's just brilliant. Weight classes, I mentioned there'll be eight weight classes to start with just listen for a sec that's to start with it's early access we don't know how many fighters they're going to have if they have 40 that's only five across each weight class with eight now if they add all the supers you're probably getting about one fighter per weight class if we're honest one or two per weight class that's not good enough so as ash mentioned you know we don't want five welters and one super welter just makes sense for early access for early access to merge them together and as more fighters are scanned, as the rosters start to expand, so welterweight starts to become like bloody hell, this is like 50-50 now, then they'll break it off to welter and super welter and it just makes sense. They mentioned that how does it look and feel in the weight comparison, Sonny said you can definitely tell the difference between a flyweight with his footwork and his punch speed and punches and even how the fight is played and how the fight is finished compared to a heavyweight which is obviously fantastic we don't want everyone to feel the same so it's good that you can definitely feel that difference between those little guys and those massive guys like himself and say Tyson Fury one thing they speak about is the commentary other languages that is a long-term goal for them but right now they just want to get that commentary right um and then you know in the future they do want several languages but in, in talks of several languages they will have text several languages on launch so if you are if you speak German or you speak French uh, or, or Chinese, then on, on day one, there should be a text for your language. So you don't have to see it in English. You can see it in a, a language that is more natural to you. And one thing that I really like that Todd spoke about with the commentary, I'll put it up quickly. But he one thing I just love was the fact that he's only asked to call a round of a fight. Then they find a clip of like, he, he, I'll, I'll show you guys an example of Todd. And I think I'm not going to talk about this because I just want you guys to hear it straight from Todd. So here you go. Just listen to this part. It's so cool. What they've done here with the ESBC is basically I will go in and call a, a round of a fight with Sonny Edwards taking on uh, Nonito Donaire or whatever. I'm just making a fight. I'll call that round. Then they'll go back. And the next time I come to a session, they'll have taken out eight different 
uh, phrases I've done. Like, let's say I say, Sonny Edwards, back up against the ropes. And they'll say, all right, say that phrase different five different ways. So I'll say, oh, Sonny Edwards back on his heels. Sonny Edwards in retreat mode. Sonny Edwards going defense first now. Sonny Edwards being more careful here. So I'll say it tons of different ways. So when the game happens, instead of me going, Sonny Edwards back against the ropes, you can play Sonny Edwards 50, 60 times and maybe you only hear that phrase once or twice. So it's been great. For me, it's been a, a very awesome experience. It's very time consuming. And just at the end, Rack just wraps it up. He just says he knows that people are patient. He knows that people want to see things. And, you know, there's a reason, There's this is the reason they've done it. So we got a lot of information and they could get in front of us and just talk, which personally, I, I just loved. You guys love, let me know if you like this format. I would like to see a cheeky screenshot come up now and then, but I like this. I like this format a lot. And even Ash at the end mentions, you know, when he follows a game, he wants to see constant updates. But So he's quite happy the fact that they're able to offer these updates even pre-early access. So, you know, we, we kind of just got to take what we're given at the moment. And I really like this format. And it was fun to break it down. And I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, if you did, drop a like, subscribe. And yeah, I just thought I'd, I'd do this so we could focus on the more important parts. Because um, there was a lot of conversation. But I thought we'd break it down into, into what you guys probably want to know about the most. Um, so yeah, thank you as always for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next one. Peace.